Okay, we've got 19 people who've joined us so far. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and welcome to this event run by Ramwick City Council to learn more about the Heffron Centre. The newest addition to Maroubra's popular Heffron Park the council-owned Heffron Centre will be a community sport and high-performance sporting centre, bringing together both grassroots community and elite sport in the heart of Maroubra. My name's Diane Knott, a Director of Engagement at Urbis, and I welcome you uh, to the webinar this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. We're recording tonight's webinar so that others across the community can enjoy it at a time that suits them. So I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that we're recording tonight's proceedings. Ramwick City Council has been engaging with the community on plans for the Heffron Centre over the last six months. And we've had lots of terrific feedback from people which have helped shape the plans that you'll see tonight. And you can see that here I am sitting in front of the uh, brand new foyer and cafe of the Heffron Centre by award-winning architects co-op studio. I'd like to welcome tonight a number of people. We're, we're joined by the Mayor of Ramwick City Council, Danny Said. Welcome Mr Mayor. We're also joined shortly by Councillor Beach and the Director of City Services, Todd Clark, who's overseeing the project for Council. We're also joined tonight by Alicia Parker Elrez, who's the General Manager of South Cares at the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And Alicia will be talking to you about some of the great community work that South Cares delivers and will soon deliver from its new headquarters at the Heffron Centre. This is a really interactive session and we've got an hour together tonight through till 7.30. So please drop your questions in the Q&A and we've got a little prompter on the screen there. If you hover your mouse over the bottom of your window, you'll see the Q&A box, which is the two little speech bubbles or the little file cards as it's shown on the screen. So please tap into that and drop your question in there. And we'll be working hard tonight to make sure we get through as many of those questions as possible. Tonight's webinar is about the Heffron Centre, so if there's other questions you've got for Council tonight, um, please direct those to Council's customer service team by visiting Council's website. The Heffron Centre proposal is currently on public exhibition and that exhibition period will close next Thursday. You can access the application and have your say on the Ramwick Council Your Say website. Click on the Heffron Centre link. And we hope that you learn a lot about the project tonight um, and we hope that you walk away with additional information and a sense of excitement for the milestone that this project has reached. I'd now like to introduce Ramwick City Council Mayor, Danny Said, who will open the proceedings and also acknowledge country. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Diane, and uh, good evening to everyone and thank you for joining us tonight. And, uh, it's a great opportunity to learn more about the next steps in transforming Heffron Park into an active and vibrant place for the whole entire community. Before we go any further, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the land of the Bidjigal and Gadjigal peoples who occupy the Sydney coast, Be being the traditional owners of the land. On behalf of Randwick City Council, I acknowledge and pay my respects to the elders both past, present and emerging. From day one, Council has been committed to ensuring that the Heffron Centre caters to both community sports and also elite sports. And our brief for the Heffron Centre is that we offer state-of-the-art, multi-purpose community facilities for generations to come. We are fortunate to be able to enter into a partnership with the New South Wales Office of Sport and the mighty South Sydney District Rabbitohs to realise this exciting opportunity for the community. I am thrilled that this month, the Heffron Centre has reached an important milestone. After Council released a sneak peek of the plans to the, opportunity of the, to the community in August, the plans are now officially on public exhibition for the community feedback. We're keen for your feedback, so please write in, let us know what you're thinking. And also, I'm going to hand over now to Todd Clark, who has worked very hard on this proposal over the years. And 
He's the Director of City Services at Ranby Council and to give us an overview of this once in a generation project for the Council. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. So, as, as our Mayor has just mentioned, and, and thanks, Diane, I'm um, lucky enough to be here to give you a, an overview or, or a, another update uh, and presentation on the Heffron Centre and um, where it's come from and where it currently is today and the, the community consultation activities and, and the various <laughs> tasks that have gone into getting it to the point where we're now on exhibition for DA, as Diane mentioned, um, and moving through to a lot more detail. As Again, as you can see in Diane's um, screen there that the beautiful forecourt of, of the Heffron Centre. So we are moving on um, really well and we've been lucky enough to, to hear what the community wants and I'll go through um, many of those facets in, in, in this bit of an overview. So just to, to move on um, in, in the slide deck to provide a bit of a history um, in context of the, I'll just wait to the, the slide, here we go, thanks very much. Um, so this, this slide provides a history um, of the, the project, the Heffron Centre, the relationship or the partnership between the South Sydney Rabbitohs and Ramwick City Council. So as you can see, the, the very first milestone of um, Heffron Park, uh, as, as we see it today, a critical milestone was the development of the Heffron Park Plan of Management and extensive community, cons community consultation, sorry, went into the development of that, that document that stipulated the future directions essentially over the decade um, that we have now been through and all the projects that, that have been uh, constructed to date. But it's really important to note uh, the relationship between South Sydney Rabbitohs and Ramwick City Council was developed really much or pretty much immediately after the, 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 the approval or endorsement by Council that Heffron Park <coughs> Management. So in 2010, as you can see there, the, the, the relationship or the partnership between South and Council was formed and progressively through the, the decade, um, the partnership evolved and grew. So in, um, as a result of the, the original partnership in 2013, Council um, has endorsed to a, a, allocate three million dollars um, to the relocation of the South Sydney Rabbitohs to Heffron Park uh, as a component of the brand new Heffron Centre. Since that time and there's been a lot of other projects that have, that have taken place, a lot of community projects that um, have been delivered in and around the proximity of Heffron Park including as you can see that the, the Heffron Pedal Park, uh, the very popular Des Renford Leisure Centre which was an upgrade of the, the old Des Renford um, Aquatic Centre. Uh, we have in, then, sorry, in 2016, we moved to uh, replace the indoor sporting facilities that, that currently exist on Bunurong Road or just off Bunurong Road um, and the gymnastics centre and incorporate the two buildings inside the new Heffron Centre in collaboration with the Centre of Excellence for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. So a few years later, in developing the business case and the plans and the models um, for the public-private partnership and the business case, for that project, we did a, a really important point to note, a sporting trend analysis. Um, so in 2017, 2018, Council done a, a big research piece um, on, on those sports um, that were deemed, you know, very important to the community and had growing participation trends within our local <laughs> community. And as such, as a direct result of that um, trend analysis in 2018, it stipulated those five sports outside of gymnastics and um, rugby league that would be incorporated into the new centre um, or the Heffron Centre. Then in 2019, the public partner partnership was officially formed and an agreement for lease um, was, was adopted by council uh, for tenure of the centre of excellence component of the building by the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And we'll go into the components um, in, in a few slides and, and, and the occupation of each of those, of those assets being the centre of excellence, the indoor sports and the gymnastics. Uh, and then as we see 2019, we just built the, the, the brand new tennis centre, which leaves the old tennis courts, for those of you that are familiar with Heffron, Park redundant now, um, which will home a brand new uh, uh, state-of-the-art sports fields. Here we are in 2020, and we're lucky enough to be talking about an actual fact, the Heffron Centre. Um, we, we, we're lucky enough to be at the DA stage to move through um, the very early design phase uh, and the community consultation activities that have taken place to, to really form that DA design package. Um, and essentially, it's the now world-class sporting facility that we, we know as, or we will know as the Heffron Centre. 
So to provide a bit of context for, for anyone that's on the line um, tonight that, that isn't familiar with, with Heffron Park, um, many of you really, so, so bear with me, but the, the Heffron Centre, as you can see, is, is, is contained within the yellow dash line as, as clearly labelled there. So Heffron Park, um, looking at you know, north, north to south, it sits on the, the western edge of the park, running directly next to Bunurong Road. So pretty much directly opposite South Point um, Shopping Centre or South Point Towers um, and, and TK Maxx for, for the locals. We, we've, we, you walk, would walk straight out of that facility, almost directly facing the brand new Heffron Centre. So within that um, yellow area or the, the dark grey area with a yellow outline, we've, that is where the Heffron Centre in its entirety, including the Centre of Excellence, the gymnastics facility and the indoor multi-purpose facility will be located. And you can't see it within um, the picture, but the old redundant tennis courts, as I mentioned, um, will, will be replaced with a brand new state-of-the-art uh, fo uh, football field. And what, what is important to note is that we have, have had a lot of questions and I frequently asked questions about the criterion. So Heffron obviously got a really popular uh, cycling track out there. Um, this, this building will not compromise um, or the project doesn't compromise the criterion on the cycling track. It's been designed as such to accommodate um, the cycling track around the, the perimeter. Council under the, the plan of management is still very much committed to, to, to renewing the Heffron Park uh, criterion. Um, it just can't be done until unfortunately the end of the project. With, it, with a project with this scale and uh, this amount of um, machinery moving around, any soft assets like a, an asphalt uh, path around the edge would potentially be destroyed. So we're leaving that component until last. And I only clarify that because we have had a quite a few questions about that important uh, cycling track. We're very, still very much committed to, to the delivery of that asset. So um, yeah, a few more few assets to note there, just for reference, we've got, as I mentioned, the Des Rental Leisure Centre, the brand new tennis centre to the north and the Heffron uh, Centre synthetic field. So spanning uh, for the community here, you can see the different elements that have made up um, or what we've seen was important to uh, the community within the, the consultation. And, and, and this outlines both the um, center of excellence and the community high performance, uh, sorry, the gymnastics, some of the key and critical components that really provide um, the breadth of community integration and involvement um, from grassroots all the way to professional athletes and, 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 and the wider community. So as you can see, um, there we've got the community sports centre with two indoor courts and we will go to in a, in a, in a few slides um, an aerial shot which actually shows each of these elements um, in, in there, in, within the asset, sorry. Um, let's clear this up. The uh, indoor gymnastics centre, the showcase field as mentioned, um, and then down the bottom um, with this clearly defines some of the community, as I mentioned, integration of the community was paramount. We heard that through the consultation activities. The, the new centre of excellence, albeit under lease from the South Sydney Rabbitohs Club, does have certain community facilities that will be um, utilised through South Cares, and we are lucky enough to have Alicia on the line um, who, who, who provide a bit more in-depth um, uh, presentation as to South Cares. But we've got the learning centre and classroom and lecture theatre, um, which, which, which will be highly utilised by, by South Cares, but is also um, can be utilised by the community. South Cares and their headquarters will be relocated to the new facility in, in addition to the, the Rabbitohs um, Football Club. And then as uh, Diane is sitting uh, virtually in right now, we have the new cafe and public plaza that is really a, a nice joining link for the community between the entry of the building, the gymnastics, the sports, um, and also the entryway for, for the, new, um, the new Centre of Excellence. So we, we had an extensive cons community consultation um, to formulate and, and, and re uh, I suppose, resubstantiate the, the key elements. We had 138 surveys, I think, submitted to um, the consultation in the earlier um, round of community view. The mayor and myself participated, along with Blake um, Solly, South CEO, and Adam Reynolds, the Rabbitohs. Uh, halfback in the Facebook live session within that first round of con community consultation. We've seen some 3,000 views on that um, pretty much or pretty successful um, consultation activity. So all of these activity have gone in um, to, to really, you know, really hone in on the design of this particular project. And what we heard specifically from the consultation is that the new building or the centre need to be community focused, inclusive, needed to be really modern and contemporary. 
um, and it needed to reflect their local area, history and culture. So obviously the character of those suburbs in, in the surround of the Heffern Centre, Maroubra, Matraville and the like come with a lot of character and history and this building needs to fit in with, with that character. Uh, Multi-purpose and, and obviously one of the bigger elements was the sustainability um, consideration that come along with the consultation and, and we will again in a, in, a, in a slide or two go through um, go through those sustainability issues that are included in in the design and that are considered currently in the DA um, exhibited pack. Uh, and just to um, I suppose to, to, to another question that's been frequently asked I suppose to, to, to bring it up the in regards to the council the, the Heffron Centre in all components is a complete council-owned asset so regardless of any lease or license, the Rabbitohs are occupying a component um, under lease of, um, with Ramwick City Council, the grant for lease with the public-private partnership. The indoor sports centre and the gymnastics centre will also be under lease, um, but all components, so the indoor sports and the gymna gymnastics is currently in um, the, the tender period for a lease for those components. Um, but regardless of all three leases, um, council remains in ownership of that uh, building in its entirety. So the funding um, that, that really made this project um, realised or, or, or happen, um, you know, the, the, it, was, it, was a, it was a joint um, a collaboration between all levels of government and it, and it, and it arose as, as a direct benefit from the public-private partnership. So for, for those that, that are interested, in, and I know there is, there's plenty out there, and, and rightly so, it's a, it's a hugely significant project of scale um, and complexity, um, the, the, the total uh, budget for the for the project can be broken down into sort of three areas. The first being um, the Heffron Centre of Excellence within the building. That in itself is around twenty five point seven million dollars. Council contributed, as as noted on the earlier slide, in twenty thirteen three million dollars of that uh, twenty five point seven total figure for that component of the building. The remaining funding is funded from a collaboration with federal government, uh, the state government through the New South Wales Office of Sport. The Rabbitohs themselves provided four million, so 10 million from state, roughly 8.6, 8.7 um, from the state and, and the New South Wales Office of Sport, four from the Rabbitohs and, and three from Ramick City Council. So essentially for $3 million, the public-private partnership has delivered a, a community asset worth 25 to uh, 26 close to $2 million dollars for Ramick City Council. Then inside that building, the other two components <clears throat> coincidentally is very close to $25.7 million dollars as well for the gymnastics and the indoor sports. That component of the building is predominantly <coughs> funded by Ramick City Council under our, our community, our future program. There is $3 million dollars of that um, of that 25.7 as well that has been funded by um, grant. The state has provided uh, $3 million for that project also, but regardless um, the, the, the other two components of the three, if you like, are, are council funded um, and, and will, um, you know, regardless, all remain on council's books as a council owned asset, which is highly valued for, for our community. And the last component, the state of the art um, showcase field, which, which is, will, will replace the uh, redundant tennis courts, is worth just over six uh, million, six point, around 6.3 million um, for, that, for that new playing field. So all in all, we're in up around the, the $60 million mark, but the large portion of that, pro, you know, a large significant portion of that is funded from, from um, external uh, federal agencies, state agencies. So we are lucky and we thank, um, we thank the partnership and those federal and state government uh, bodies for, for providing that contribution to make this project a realisation for, for Ramick City Council's community. So what's included, as I mentioned, this is a bit of a, an aerial uh, view of, of the brand new Heffron Centre. So as mentioned, the, the, entry, the entry is off Bunurong Road, as you can see there on the bottom of the screen and in the circle, just for reference, the Heffron, the brand new uh, tennis centre is, is in that little circle line. The old redundant tennis courts will be where the green, brand new field is, as the hand thankfully is saying over the top that now, thank you. Um, and then just to talk to the components of the Heffron Centre, you can see if you put like the, the darker blue 
um, area houses the uh, indoor sports centre, which which houses five sports in coexistence there. So those sports being uh, basketball, uh, netball, volleyball, futsal, and badminton. So those sports, as I mentioned earlier on, were, were, were decided um, from that Sport Trend Analysis Council conducted in 2017 and 2018. Um, and, and essentially needing to co-integrate those sports has, has really fed into how the design of that, that building looks. So um, again, that, the, the tenancy of that building is currently out for tender and there's no um, lease as of yet, but that will house five sports. If you move to the front of the building in the orange, dark orange um, shaded area, that is a new state-of-the-art um, gymnastics facility and that will replace uh, the current gymnastics facility out out on site at the moment. So in the gymnastics facility, we obviously have the, the new training, competition, spectator viewing areas um, and program spaces that will occupy uh, that particular space. Then we've got uh, the Community High Performance Centre, which is the, the, the dark or, or the lighter green, as, as you can see um, on, on the left of the screen there. So important to note, um, there's a, an internal street or passageway, if you like, that runs from um, west to east through the building, and it's a direct link, as, as the hand is, is showing there. The, there's a few rooms that are double coloured, if you like, in blue and green, just off to the side. There are the, the, the community used rooms that, that sorry, exist within the centre of excellence. So that whole area will be under lease from the Rabbitohs Football Club, but there are community rooms or assets that lie within that footprint, like the lecture theatre and the classroom, um, as mentioned uh, earlier on. So uh, important, another note, um, as you know, where Diane is sitting virtually at the moment, that full court area, it's a real um, you know, passive recreational uh, space that will bring um, everyone together, as, as mentioned, from grassroots all the way to you know, the different sporting bodies to, to the wider community with the cafe. Uh, we're looking to um, essentially incorporate into the design of that passageway, uh, Ramick City Council history and the South Sydney Football Club's history as it integrates as you move from the front of the building to at the back where it becomes more of a, a high performance centre and the, and the training facility for the, for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Um, but essentially that we're, we're putting a lot of emphasis on the design and integration of that internal street um, to really activate it as, a, as a, a, good, a good space for for the community. So if we can move now to the entry. We're, we are lucky enough to, to show you a few more artist impressions tonight, um, which may have moved on from some of the earlier concepts that uh, some of you may have seen. And just to premise the, the next few slides, is they are artist impressions and they're not an actual um, design as of yet. These um, artist impressions were formulated off the concept and, and early design uh, DA package. And these will become more real, obviously, as we move through the design. Uh, we will get fly-throughs and the like that we'll be able to share with the community of you know, actually giving an opportunity for someone without the building being constructed to essentially walk through the building virtually at a point in time. But um, these um, artist impressions done to date are a very, very good re uh, reflection um, of what the building is proposed to look like in colour, scale, material, materiality, integration um, with landscaping, trees uh, and the car park and the like. So yeah, I premise that it's not the actual building, but it is extremely close and, and you can get a good sense of what um, we're looking at with, with a picture like this. And this is the entry and plaza area. And just to echo a few of the points that I mentioned earlier, this is you know where you get your first experience of the brand new Heffron Centre. This is where everyone, regardless of group or agency, will walk through the building. Um, it's a central entry point. Uh, it's a community entry point, regardless of, of the entity that, that you'll be walking into. So it's a really, really important area. And we try to, as I said, integrate with the local surrounds, integrate with the use and the community um, the community use uh, being the cafe and, and the shared spaces moving down through to the back of uh, the building. Uh, now, looking at the, the view um, from the west of, of the showcase uh, field. So this, if, if you could picture, for those of you, again, that are familiar with the site, if you're standing on the old tennis courts behind the indoor multi-purpose centre out at Heffron Park currently, and you're looking towards Bunurong Road, this is the, the position you'd be standing on. So this is, the, the, the old tennis courts will be removed and replaced with a brand new showcase field. And you're looking directly back at Bunurong Road at the rear of the new Heffron Centre. And you can see um, uh, at the, the height of that building there 
I'm, I'm pleased to let you know that that is not a part of the Heffron Centre. That's just in context of um, the five building. That large structure at the back um, is the South Point uh, Residential Towers on top of South Point Shopping Centre on the other side of Bunnerong Road. But at the forefront or in the middle of, of the picture, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, which will be the indoor sports, uh, the indoor um, basketball courts, volleyball courts, badminton, futsal, uh, as we mentioned, those five sports that will be integrated within um, that uh, large rectangular uh, portion of the building. You can see the street in the centre um, that will run from west to east, uh, you know, directly through the centre of the building. Um, you'll be able to see straight out into the showcase field. And then as you move over um, to the right of the picture, you've got the centre of excellence there with the administration of South Cares and the football club at the top on the first floor um, with the new gymnast gymnastics uh, sorry, with the new um, Centre of Excellence uh, gymnasium at the bottom and just in, next to the street, those community style um, rooms that we mentioned, the lecture theatre and, 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 the, uh, and the classroom. So that's a, a, a fair view of, of what you'll see if you, if you were standing on the, um, on the uh, tennis courts right now. So as I mentioned, one of the key components that come out of the consultation was the sustainability to be incorporated in design. And we noted that was extremely important um, for our, our community. So when we, when we went out to the community, we, we specifically asked uh, three questions um, of, of the community in the first year or so. So what are your aspirations um, as a community member for the Heffron Centre? What you'd like to see included in the design and, what, and how you would like it to be integrated into the park? And a large theme that came out of all three of those questions amongst many other design principles was the sustainability. So we listened uh, inside that consultation task and we incorporated many features from um, environmental sustainable design within um, the Heffron Centre. And as it shows on the, the screen right now, this is just a couple of what we'll look at in a second, um, how they integrate into the actual uh, into the actual building. But what we could see, uh, what was important was, you know, maximising natural light and ventilation. Um, so that reduces, you know, things like air conditioning and the mechanical ventilation required uh, for building of this scale uh, and complexity. So those natural um, passive sustainability techniques have been incorporated. Um, we've got charging stations for electric vehicles and bike parking, uh, as noted there, rooftop solar panels, um, so this roof provides um, ample opportunity with, with a large roof span to be able to install devices like um, PV uh, solar cells. The landscaping, um, as you, you, you've seen in, in the last of the, the few uh, slides, and there's a couple more to come, a big component was the integration uh, with Heffron Park that this building needed to fit into the, the, the local uh, landscape in, in, its, in its greenery. So there's a lot of trees, the native um, native plants, uh, the, the mounds that are built into the side of the building to, to really sort of reduce the scale of size of the building from um, different viewpoints along, along Bunnerong Road. And then also as a side effect, provide passive recreation areas for people to sit and enjoy um, the sun outside of, um, just you know, for no particular reason, all outside of the, the Heffron Centre. So we've got about 100 brand new trees and natives that are going to be installed as a result of this um, project. So we're happy to, to be able to deliver on, on, on something of that bulk and, and scale, um, you know, to, to essentially help with factors like our canopy, uh, with, our, with factors like our, our heat, um, heat and shade effect uh, that, that we see in large spans. So this is a really good representation about specifically where some of those uh, environmental sustainable initiatives will be installed um, on, on the project. So you can see we've, we've, we, a building of this size has a significant roof space, which provides opportunities for solar panels, rainwater capture for reuse within the building. Um, we've got the natural ventilation and sunlight. So the building's orientated and positioned in such a way where we reduce the need for lights. Um, in certain in certain uh, conditions, uh, and that all just reduces the building's uh, carbon footprint as much as as much as possible. We've got at the front of the building the electric charging vehicle stations. Um, we've got bike parking again in that forecourt area, and we've got drainage aquifer recharge. So Heffron Park, we've got a philosophy where we we reuse a lot of the water um, to mix. Um, you know, we've got Des Renford on the site. Uh, we've got other particular assets where we try and capture whatever we can for reuse. This project will be no different, but we get the benefits of the size where we can capture water and runoff um, and then essentially recharge the aquifer 
uh, for some of the bore water uses that we use in other elements or other areas on the peripherals of, of Heffron Park. So there's a lot of direct benefits, a lot of indirect benefits, but we're trying to capture um, all of those um, facets within uh, this building, um, given its its size uh, and given the opportunity that, that comes um, with, with a project like this. So obviously I think there's a few good examples of how we've, we've, we've seen some of the consultation activities really feed into the design and I thank everyone for um, their participation um, both last time in the first round of consultation whether it been the Facebook live session or your say uh, and then again participating tonight um, in this uh, this fantastic Zoom session so I'm very happy now to, to hand over to, you know, to continue on with the community aspect of this. Yeah, thank Fantastic. you so much. Thank you, Todd, thank you. for that presentation. You've um, compressed 16 years worth of effort into um, a, a real cook's tour of the last 16 years of effort onto this project. Um, Todd, there's a couple of questions coming through the Q&A. Um, you did speak uh, really clearly to the fact that council retains ownership of the into asset. Um, you also mentioned that South will be charged a lease fee for their use of the asset. I've, I've got a couple of questions here around the difference between a license and a, and a lease. Could you explain that yes. to um, the audience here tonight, please? Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. So the, 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 there's two components. Council under the public-private partnership have entered into an agreement for lease and license. So um, the lease and license actually can't be developed until a building is in existence, but there's an agreement in principle in place for the occupation of those facilities. And the difference between the two is agreement for lease would, would happen for the occupation of a building. So there's been agreement for lease for the Rabbitohs, for the centre of excellence component. We're, we're actually out to market or we've just finished the first round of market testing for an agreement for lease will be developed for the gymnastics and indoor sports centre but a license will be um, developed for the field. So the difference between those two um, uh, property methods, if you like, will be the lease for the buildings for those three components. Um, so the Rabbitohs will have an agreement for lease for the centre of excellence. Uh, entities will have agreement for lease for the sports and, and agreement for lease for the gymnastics. Um, and then there'll be an agreement for lots, a license for the field. So that's just the way the, the, they're constructed. Um, South, um, will the market rent um, will be offset through the contributions made for a period of time under that agreement for lease. But council resolved to do so within, uh, I think, 2019 um, with, with the adoption of um, that agreement for lease and then earlier on in the public-private partnership. So we're, we're following a similar um, process, if you like, for the gymnastics and the indoor sports um, in looking to get some uh, you know, entities on um, to, to fill those spaces under a lease arrangement, sort of a tenancy uh, agreement. Todd, thank you for explaining that. I think it was important as there were a number of members of the audience who were seeking clarification on that point. So thank you. I'd like to hand over now to Alicia Parker Elrez, who's the general manager of South Cares. And if you haven't heard about South Cares, you're going to learn everything that you need to know in the next five minutes from Alicia before we go into our Q&A. Thanks so much, Alicia. No worries. Hi, everyone. I too would like to acknowledge the Bidjigal and Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and also pay my respects to elders both past, present and emerging and extend um, that acknowledgement to any Aboriginal people that are online tonight as well. Uh, I might just start with sharing my screen. So I thought what I would do was give you a bit of an overview of South Cares without going, you know, without talking too much because I'm sure you don't want to hear my voice all night or for the next five minutes. So Southcares was established in 2006 as an independent public benevolent institution. Um, the Southcares charity has been built upon the South Sydney Rabbitohs long and proud history of supporting the community, in particular Indigenous Australians. Southcares charter is to support disadvantaged and marginalised youth and their families through the delivery of capacity building programs addressing education, training, health and employment needs. Southcares obviously is a tax deductible char charity. So the three pillars of community programs that we have is education. We have three programs that fall under that, which is our Nengamai Mari, um, which is Gadigal language for dream big, deadly youth mentoring program and our Liverpool Opportunity Hub. 
We also have the employment pillar, which is our new careers for Aboriginal people for Southwestern Sydney and our new careers for Aboriginal people for Western Sydney. Also that falls under then those pillars is health, which is our Rabbitohs wellbeing program, breakfast boot camps and healthy body and healthy mind. I guess just a bit of an overview about our impacts. So last year we seen 15,000 regional and remote primary school students who have com uh, who completed the Indigenous Oral, Oral Health Program. We had 600 plus candidates placed into employment since 2015. Uh, we've done 12,000 primary school students completing the Rabbitohs Wellbeing Program each year. Uh, our HSC completion rate for our Nangamai Mari program is 91%. 85% of students um, have successfully transitioned into employment, tertiary education or training within six months of leaving school. Uh, we issue multitudes of money can't buy game day experiences. We've got at least 25 plus at risk Aboriginal youth um, that come to the attention of police or get on the wrong side of the system um, that receive intensive mentoring. We had 60 plus primary school students participate in our wellbeing program. And we also have six high schools that are involved in our Nangamai Murray program. What I wanted to do was I wanted to give you a little bit of a snapshot of um, 2019 for South Cares um, and just what it looked like and some of our achievements. Sorry. sorry about that. You've got a beautiful video to show us. Oh, sorry. It looks like it hasn't actually shared. It says that I'm sharing it. It's still sharing the presentation. Yeah, right? If you click stop sharing and then start sharing the video. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll go back then. Well, of course it doesn't want to work now. Alicia, um, what would it being in the Heffron Centre mean for South Cares? Oh, look, there's a multitude of opportunity across there as well. Um, we already service the region across multiple of our programs. It just gives us an arm's length as well. And also being able to have a classroom in-house, obviously at the Heffron Centre and that theatre at, so we can bring more school students in, into the facility as well. Amazing. And Alicia, um, you're, you're moving offices at the moment out of Redfern into South Juniors, which is an interim move for you. But obviously the bigger move will be moving into the Heffron Centre where you can you know, run these services out of Maroubra and support the community. Um, it might be worth popping your slides back up because there's some really amazing statistics in there in terms of the number of people you help every yeah. year. I'll actually give it another go at sharing that video. And if it doesn't work, I'll actually, I've got a few other slides that I actually can touch mm -hmm. on. Yeah, while, while Alicia's doing that, Todd, I've got an interesting question here in the chat, which is, um, has council given thought to the building design so that it can incorporate post-COVID um, distancing and, you know, all of the things we've become used to in the last six months, and particularly um, minimising transmission of COVID? Yeah, look, that, that's a that's a great question, and, and it's a, and it's a I suppose a really interesting one to answer. So, obviously, the building um, has got those those air ventilation um, type uh, passive design features that that I described before. Um, the the forecourt area is designed as such to open up 
um, as much space as possible. Um, the, the seating arrangements can be spread out all the way down the hallway, out to the back of the field. The showcase um, field area has as, as provision for, for seating, which is a flow on effect um, from, from, can be from the cafe or, or the like. Um, the, there's, there's multiple operational doors operate, oper, operable walls. Um, yes, like it is, it is a complex uh, design consideration, um, one that's not really easily solved in any building form um, or be it residential or a commercial building like this. Um, it's, it has thrown a span that it works, but uh, the building of this scale um, offers, uh, you know, one of the best um, attributes for, for social distancing. Um, but it, it will be a busy building. Um, you know, it's broken up. It can be accessed from different different points as well. So, you know, the different user groups, whilst there is a central location, can use other exits if there are provisions in the future that need to be made. But um, yeah, there have been considerations uh, within reason, but we are still required to build to the building code and the Australian standard, um, which, which, which does set a certain level of detail required for, for, for our building. So um, it's a compromise of all, if, if you like. Right, thank you. I've also got a question here about car parking. How much car parking will be provided at the Heffron Centre and, and how have you come to that, um, that number? Yeah, so we've done um, obviously transport um, analysis or tra transport studies um, in the vicinity of, of the area. Uh, we've done active transport studies as well, um, which is trying to promote active travel um, in and around Heffron to the centre and the like. So Remick City Council's got a really active integrated transport department looking at um, cycleways and infrastructure <coughs> of the like, which fits in with the Greater Sydney um, bike network. So we are looking to, to obviously, you know, get cars off the road in a particular way, but the cars that oh, I, you know, need obviously, you know, to address for those of you that live in the area, parking is a premium at Heffron Park um, on, on, on certain peak periods um, of, of, of the week, you know, whether it's training or soccer on the weekend or, or with a netball on, on Saturday and rugby league or ready and the like. But um, there, there's approximately 100 um, in, in a, a, over 100 car spaces. Um, but I think it's in the 140 potentially mark, 100 mark. Um, I don't know the number off the top of my head now, but that's been developed from a, um, a, a transport study uh, that we, we find, you know, with the peak use, there's studies in around, you know, when the car park will be used, who will be using the car park. So the car park is not designed for one particular user group. It's just an extension um, with the capability to do so of the existing car park on Bunurong Road. So the car park that almost fronts um, Bunurong and the new synthetic field almost is mirrored and flipped on its head. So we've got a quite an extensive car park um, to come as a result of this project, but it's a public car park that, that we get to offer to the community that hopefully alleviates some of the pressures. But yeah, some of the occupants, or, or you know, if you look at the occupants of the building with, when South are there, um, you know, they're generally occupying the building at all hours, but predominantly when Heffron Park's quiet. So that offers um, you know, a good synergy with Heffron Park. And then when you've got the, set, the training of the local sporting groups is generally after hours and after business hours, after school, after work, comes at the back end of the day. So there's a nice synergy in the co-use of, of that car park and the studies have been um, really informed that. Right, and I've just got a follow-up question to that, Todd, which is where will the car park be located? It might be worth um, bringing back up those yeah. slides so, that we're in my team. Yeah. And point that out to people. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, while, while the, the, the slide's coming back up, the, the car park um, will be located, as if, if I can give you a direct reference, if you're standing out the front of TK Max or on Bunurong Road or the old trade secret there on, on um, underneath the South Point Towers and looking at the existing, um, it's coming out now, at the existing um, green indoor sports and the existing gymnastics, the car park will run pretty much from the Matrigal Tigers field, like that they are they remain untouched in this this project. They they, they actually light and gets upgraded as, as a result of this project with another community benefit. But um, the the new car park will run from sort of the outside edge of the existing gymnastics all the way down to the set of lights at Flint Street off Bunurong Road. So it's almost like the the, the new car park that was built. Yeah, that's a, a good. Um, that's a really good image there. That existing car park that you can see in front of the Heffron synthetic field and the tennis courts is pretty much flipped on its head um, and doubled in, in, in size to run in front of the, the Heffron Centre. And it's, it's, it, it's an exactly the same operational need as that car park, a public car park um, for, for community use. Right, thank you, Todd. Alicia Parker Elrez, are the tech gods with you? 
They're definitely not. Um, but what I can do is I can elaborate on some of our yeah. just through a PowerPoint. I don't know why, but the video doesn't want to play That's for okay. me. No problem. So has that come up? Can you can you see my screen now? No, we can't. How about you talk us through um, some of the highlights of 2019 for South Cares? How many um, how many people did you support over that period, and what kinds of services did you deliver? Well, look, there's a quite a range of services um, that we deliver. So, for instance, I'll just give you an example. So, we've got intensive mentoring programs, where one being Nangamai Murray, where we support Aboriginal students from years nine to twelve in order to complete their HSE and go on to further education and employment. Uh, roughly, we hold about 105 mentees at a time, and they're across schools, obviously, in the Ramwick area. We also have the Deadly Youth Mentoring Program, which also services the same area, and that's for um, students that are between 10 to 17 years old that come to the attention of the police. We're pretty much an early intervention program, so we intervene and do some intensive mentoring support, and, and we refer where possible. Uh, we've got the Rabbitohs Wellbeing Program where we deliver key health messages to primary and high school students. So some of the key topics there are across, uh, we've pretty much got bullying, um, health and nutrition, physical activity, um, and we've just developed in a response to community and mental health um, presentation in regards to that. We've got uh, New Careers for Aboriginal People, which is an employment and training program, which we pretty much deliver across Sydney. Um, I'm trying to think. And we do a lot of ad hoc stuff. So what we also do, oh, we do breakfast boot camps um, four times a week when obviously when COVID allows us to. We do homework hubs um, at schools as well. So yeah, we, we pretty much service everyone from a, a baby to the 65 year old that's still happy to work and wants to seek employment. And how important is it to, to the club to have a, a service like South Cares? Oh, look, it means everything to the club. It's in the Rabbitohs DNA. Um, and I mean that when I say that, like it's just a part of who we are. You know, players come, you know, when we contract a player with the Rabbitohs, the, the contracts with the community as well. So, you know, we're very strict on that. Um, so we have the buy-in of the whole playing group, which you would have seen. So when they're not in the bubble and outside of COVID restrictions, the playing group are actually really, really active in the community and in, in our programs as well. Alicia Parker Elrez, thank you for explaining a little bit more to us about South Cares. I think we've got a few questions coming through the Q&A on it, so I'll come back to you in a moment. Um, I've got a couple of follow-up questions here um, for the Randwick City Council team. So a uh, couple of questions, Todd, you raised earlier, there's um, a few tenders to go out to market for, for different services. Um, there's a question here about whether the cafe would be council run or whether that would go out to a, through a tender process. The, uh, sorry, the, um, the, the cafe is under um, the, the tenancy agreement with the um, Centre of Excellence. So it's a part of the Rabbitohs component of the building. So um, I, I can't comment on the Rabbitohs um, intent to sublease or, or, or occupy that particular um, component of the building, but it is under, um, it's not under council um, direct control. Okay, great. And then the showcase field that you showed us on the plan, um, will that be used for, the question is, will that be used for the training of all South teams? So I'm assuming the question is around South juniors and, and others. Uh, again, uh, it's it's uh, I can't, like it's under license with the Rabbitohs Football Club. The the senior um, the senior team will undoubtedly utilise the assets that come with their centre of excellence. There, I'd imagine um, within the the scope of the the field's um, entirety, there will be definitely junior um, ju junior groups that, that that do get on that field and 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 rub shoulders. You know, as we spoke about before, that pathway from grassroots all the way to um, the first grade footballer. So there will be elements of of time where where there is um, yeah the, the junior grades at, at a point on there, but predominantly um, from it from a South use, it would be the, the 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 first grade team, which is you know fantastic for a young um, local kid. I myself you know grew up playing football around Heffron Park, and it have been fantastic to see um, you know the likes of uh, the players that are 
are there today, Cody Walker, and that kicking football is just a, a couple of metres away from you. Um, so that has its benefit. But then also, as a side um, to that, council does have use um, at, a, at, a, at a certain rate of that particular field as well. So we will, we will have you know, in consultation with the Rabbitohs and their, and their training times, uh, times where there will be community groups or, 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 or organisations on that field, um, you know, enjoying a state-of-the-art facility like that we're about to construct. So there will be um, dual use um, that has been agreed in, in, in the licence. Great. Thanks for explaining that, Todd. Um, we had a question earlier about the exhibition period um, and it's the, the DA's on exhibition now as we talked to earlier. A um, couple of people on the chat who were really you know deeply interested in the plans and wanting some um, time to look at those. Has council put any consideration to extending the exhibition period was the question. Um, at this point I don't believe we've had a formal request to uh, but uh, yeah, I think there's a standard 14 day period for, for, for development application exhibition. Um, and, I, and I, you know, can say on merit at the, this point in time, I don't believe I've had a formal request of extension um, unless one's come in and I'm not, a, I'm not aware of it. But at this point in time, yeah, it, it is 14 days. Yep. Well, just back to the design of the Heffron Centre, um, we've heard a lot about different influences, the landscape being one of them. There's a question here from the audience about whether designing for country and connecting with country has been considered in the design. And I think to um, Alicia, it's also not just about the design, is it, but it's about how the centre's fitted out over time as well. Oh, 100%, like from our end and, and not speaking on behalf of the Rabbitohs, but we want to incorporate as much of the local community and artwork, et cetera, and the buy-in as possible. Um, it's, it's not as simple fix as, oh, we did this or we planted a plan and we met the expectations of the community and we're doing the right thing by Aboriginal people. We live and breathe it every day. Thanks, Alicia. Todd, did you want to uh, add? Yeah, I was yeah, just, uh, just to add to that, Diane, there is a, a very strong Indigenous um, aspect to the whole build internally and externally, um, which will be through the plantings and obviously artwork inside. And, and being South Cares with their strong uh, connection to Indigenous, and we've got our own through our own community down at La Brue. So, yes, there will be, it will definitely be taken on board. Terrific. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have any new questions coming. Oh, I do have one, but again, this is a question to um, South Rugby League Club as the tenant as to whether South Juniors would be involved in the project. So, I, I, so without talking on behalf of the mm. Rabbitohs Football Club, I can say there's a, 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 high, a, a hugely strong relationship um, in support of both ways, both um, from the South Juniors. Um, and, and the South Seniors. So um, you've got obviously Blake Solly at, at the helm there, the, the, the Rabbitohs um, Senior Football Club is a phenomenal community um, supporter. Uh, he, he is in support with the Rabbitohs Football Club and many of the community organisations, you know, in addition to South Cares already in the vicinity of, of, of um, Heffron Park. And then you've got um, the, you know, the fantastic uh, team at South Juniors who do enormous amounts for the local community, the local kids, the local sporting groups with Keith McGraw uh, and Luke Curry there. So really that um, connection is, is such a strong supporting factor for Ramick City Council. And it's, it's, it's really at the, the foundation of the public-private partnership and, and where earlier on, you know, so the relationship dates back to 2009 uh, you know, and 10. Um, the relationship with South Juniors dates back much further than that and they have been delivering on, on many of these programs for, 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 uh, for many years and this project is just a result of the relationship between those two and the support for our community. Great, thanks Todd. I've got a couple of last um, questions as we start to wrap up. So would other sporting organisations have access to the gym facilities? So Todd, you explained the various uses for the Heffron Centre. Yeah, so the, the, the gymnastics facility, um, the components of everyone for it again, the gymnastics facility will be under lease for gymnastics, uh, obviously state-of-the-art facility for the operation uh, competition um, of that 
sport, that discipline. Then you've got um, the, the indoor sports, which is those five sports coexisting within there. Then you've got the, gymnast the gym gymnasium facilities within the centre of excellence, which are, it's a centre of excellence that is under lease from the Rabbitohs Football Club. Again, I, I, I not, can't comment on, on at this particular point in time if there's any relationships between South and any other entities to, for the use. But as for, 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 I suppose, to note, it, it's designed as a centre of excellence for um, a professional rugby league uh, football team and the funding uh, really has derived for the community asset um, that, that started with the centre of excellence concept and grew into this big community project. But, um, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a publicly accessible gymnasium. We have Des Renford Leisure Centre, uh, which is only metres from this uh, site, which is a fantastic gym uh, to the public. So if there's anyone out there that is interested in joining a, a Ramick City Council gym, we've only got to look a couple of metres uh, to the other corner of Heffron Park and we've got a, a phenomenal and highly successful award-winning gym, uh, gym facility uh, there that's, that's ready for use right now. Brilliant, thank you. And Todd, you showed us a, a render of the building uh, next to the South Point Tower. I've also got a question yep. about the, the height of the building or how many storeys the building is. I don't, yeah, so I don't actually have the exact me measurement. I have to take that on notice. Um, but the, 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 the reference to that um, tower building on the other side of the road was just to show the difference in height. So we are bringing, there is a lot of um, flooding issues in the existing site at Heffron Park. For those of you that, that drive around the area or come in uh, the back way, you'll always notice after rain periods there's a huge swimming pool, if you like, at the, at the, uh, at the base of the old tennis courts. There's, there's, an, uh, there's a flow, flood path through, through Heffron Park that we're looking to fix as a result of this building. So as such, we'll, we'll, we'll pick the, the level up a bit, a bit. So the, the current sports centre is below the height of Bunurong Road. And you know, in, in layman's terms, we'll pick it all up to alleviate those water problems. And we're going to start capturing those water and putting it back in, in the aquifer. So um, I don't have the height of, of the building off hand, but it's, it's a two-storey facility. So there's only, only in parts. So it doesn't um, exceed the height that's required for a basketball court, an indoor basketball court. So that obviously has the, the ring requirements um, and the clearance requirements for those sports. The, the building is almost um, at that level at maximum, but part of the centre of excellence does um, contain two floors, um, not for the entirety, but for, for a portion that does um, facilitate the administration of um, Alicia at South Cares and, and Blake in the South administration. Um, and, and, their, and their staff. So, yeah, no, no higher than, than two floors in, in parts. Thank you, Todd. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Alicia Parker-Elrez. And thank you to our participants online as well and for all your fantastic questions. Um, the Heffron Centre proposal is on public exhibition for another week. The information is available on Council's Your Say website on the Heffron Centre <laughs> I encourage you to jump on and have a look. And as the Mayor said at the opening, please let us know your thoughts. Um, and thank you so much for joining us this evening.